So welcome to High School Physics Explained and today I want to examine question number 19 from the 2009 HSE physics paper. And this question is a little bit different to what you're probably used to. So here is question number 19 and just to let you know by the way, um, uh, our HSC now has mul uh, 20 multiple choice questions. So question number 19 isn't a short answer questions anymore, it is multiple choice. Uh, but at 2009, uh, we only had 15 multiple choice questions. So that's why question number 19 is a short answer question. So on first inspection, you can see that this appears to be a projectile motion question. You can clearly see a parabola as we go from left to right. Uh, but what's different is, is that this is not a situation that you're familiar with in terms of uh, projectile motion. Projectile motion uh, usually is done with acceleration being a pro um, due to the gravity, uh, but that's not the case in this case. Uh, and so what this question is really testing you is whether you can apply your understanding of projectile motion to a new situation. So let's examine it closer. Uh, and by the way, as after I've read the question through, it'd be worth pausing and actually for you to attempt the question before I do the explanation. So we've got an electron is emitted from a mineral sample and travels through aperture A into a spectrometer at an angle of 60 degrees with a speed of 6 by 10 to the power of 6 meters per second. It says calculate the magnitude and direction of the force experienced by the electron and then the electron experiences a constant acceleration and eventually strikes the detector at D. What is the time taken for the electron to travel from A to D? I'd pause now if you want to attempt it. So let's pull this question apart. This is literally just a projectile motion problem, but it is applying it to our understanding of charges moving in an electric field. And so you should know that an electron, if it is in an electric field, which is set up by having a potential difference uh, between two plates, that electron will experience a force. And that force, of course, will be in the direction such that of the electric field lines in situation. Now, the diagram automatically assumes that we know what the direction will be, and so that direction is going to be downwards because that's the path, uh, what it indicates there. But the question, of course, is, is what is the force that is applied there? Well, first of all, we need to understand that there is an electric field that causes the electron to experience a downward force. And that's true to help us understand that because, of course, projectile motion has an acceleration in one direction and a constant velocity in the other direction, in the horizontal direction. And that gives you your classic parabola. Well, first of all, what we need to know, of course, is that an electric field is set up. An electric field is set up by doing the voltage over the distance. In your formula sheet, if you're doing the HSC, the formula is written like this. So the electric field can be determined. And then of course, the force is equal to the electric field multiplied by the charge. So what you can now do is substitute everything in. Now I've got two formulas in here and it is always helpful rather than combining these formulas into one go is to substitute them in one by one because then you can show you can at least substitute correctly into a known equation. So in this case our electric field is 100 volts over 0.1 meter. Now it's important that you understand that that is in the correct SI unit and we get an electric field strength of a thousand newtons per coulomb, or you could say volts per meter. It's basically uh, a similar um, unit. You can use either unit. Now that we know that, we can work out the force, and the force is, of course, is equal to the electric field we just worked out, which is a thousand, multiplied by the charge of an electron, which is 1.6 by 10 to the power of negative 19 coulomb, which gives us a grand total of force of 1.6 by 10 to the power of negative 16 newtons. And, and of course, that force has to be to the direction of the positive plate. So careful, you've got to read the question. It's asked you the magnitude and the direction. So there's the magnitude, and you need to identify 
the direction of the force, in this case by an arrow, or by saying down towards the zero voltage plate. And that will be okay to give that to give you full three marks. So let's now start looking at part B. So I'm going to put B over here so I can move across the page here for our simplicity. Um, and the first thing we need to do is, because this is a projectile motion problem, we need to know the acceleration. And the acceleration is due to the force that this electron is experiencing. So the first thing we're going to do is work out the acceleration that this electron is experiencing. So the acceleration, of course, is equal to the force divided by the mass. And as a result, the force divided by the mass is equal to the 1.6 by 10 to the power of negative 16 newtons and divided by the mass of the electron, which is 9.109 by 10 to the power of negative 31 kilogram. And we get a grand total in this case, 1.759 by 10 to the power of 14 meters per second squared. So now we have the acceleration of my electron. Now, now we can go into the projectile motion problem. And of course, I always tell my students, when you're doing equations of motion, always write down all the five variables that you could actually get. So I've got V, U, A, R, and T. And we write down all the variables we know. And as long as we have three, we can remember, return, uh, find out the final uh, fourth variable. So the initial velocity is actually given. It's six by 10 to the power of six multiplied by the sine of 60. And that is the initial velocity in meters per second. I'm just going to leave it like this. The acceleration, of course, is downward where this is upward. So we have to say this is negative 1.7 seven five nine by 10 to the power of 14 meters per second squared. The displacement in this case is it's going up and then it's going down. Uh, and so uh, the displacement in this case is zero. And the time taken, of course, is what we're looking for. So I have U, A, R and T. That gives me a formula that I know and that is R is equal to UT plus a half AT squared. Now, I generally always encourage my students not to rearrange first, but to substitute first in and then rearrange. I know in some ways it makes it easier if you do it the other way around, but the reality is, as many HSE exams we mark for substituting into a correct equation. So if you substitute it incorrectly and then stuff it up by a rearrangement, you're less likely to uh, lose all the marks than if you were to um, rearrange it incorrectly because then you would be substituting into an incorrect equation and you don't want to do that. So we've got zero is equal to, okay, so we've got six by 10 to the power of six multiplied by root three over two, that is equal to there. Then we, of course, we have a T, which is our time. And then we have plus a half a T squared. So that's a half by um, um, a, which is negative 1.759 by 10 to the power of 14. And there we go. Multiplied by T squared. You can just squeeze it on there. Um, now, if I rearrange that, I get this, and I'll just choose a different color so that we can separate the values out. So now I'm going to throw this on the other side, and then I get a half over multiplied by negative 1.759 by 10 to the power of 14, like so, t squared is equal to 6 by 10 to the power of 6 root 3 over 2 t. Now clearly I can cancel out a t and that's not a problem because obviously um, it's going to be at this position. At e this is uh, true 
uh, zero displacement at the start. So that's a t equals zero, but we want the zero displacement at d, so we can actually cancel out one t over there. And so as a result, I get t is equal to six by 10 to the power of six, multiplied by root three over two, all over a half multiplied by negative one. Now this is because of the um, rearrangement, that should be positive, um, that should be positive, one, okay, we get that, 1.759 by 10 to the power of 14, okay, because I've done, and when I calculate that out, I get, I get 5.9, by 10 to the power of negative 8 seconds. And I hope that has helped you solving this particular question. Bye for now. I hope you found that video useful. And remember, like, share and subscribe. Oh, and if you have a comment or a question, or you'd like a concept for me to explain to you, please drop a comment down below. I'm Paul from High School Physics Explained. Bye for now.